من امسيات منبر الباحثين السودانيين في محيط اعتصام القياده العامه سقطت ما سقطت صابنا سقطت ما سقطت صابنا حريه سلام وعداله والوعي قرار الشعب حريه, حرية سلام وعداله مدنيه قرار الشعب يسعدني انه ان شاء الله نبدا الليله الفقره الاولى بتاعتنا اللي هو نادي مخاطبه اللغه الانجليزيه وموضوع اليوم هو الفورين بوليسي اند هاو تو مينيمايز هاو تو بريفنت هاو تو فورين انترفينشنز في في السودان بوليسي فيديروا لنا الاستاذ عبد المنعم استاذ محمد فمشكورين يعني شكرا لهم. ثانك يو فيري ماتش ليديز اند جنتلمان وي وود لايك تو ويلكم يو تو اور انجلش كلوب از ات از اولويز ديورينج ذيس تايم وي ستارت اور انجلش ديسكشن جروب سو وي وود لايك تو ويلكم يو تو سودانيز ريسيرش انيشيتيف ان انيشيتيف ذات ستارتد باي دكتور انور دافالا اند وي دو ثانك him for that. So today's topic is about uh, Sudan foreign policy and how are we going to intervene, uh, how, how are we going to um, prevent intervention or foreign intervention. So me and my friend Muhammad Al-Fatih are going to coordinate our discussion today. So thank you and I would like to welcome online viewers too. So Muhammad Al-Fatih, what do you want to say and then we will just start. Uh, Hello and good evening to everyone. So uh, as we discussed today, the, we, today we, yesterday we, have the, this, we had the discussion of the strike that has occurred uh, yesterday and both today. Unfortunately, uh, to continue along with it, just a brief introduction, we have had a very good strike along all the uh, sectors and all of the areas in Sudan, whether it's private sector or public sector in all of the states. It was, uh, I can say, pretty much successful, and it had a lot of impact with the policy as a whole, to the point that I think that the uh, DMC has uh, made an, uh, had made an, a letter stating that they want to continue the uh, cooperation and discussion along with negotiation with the, uh, for, uh, with the coalition of the freedom and justice. So uh, we are very glad that the strike has made a very positive impact on the policy of the whole. And we are sure that, you know, if things got escalated any further, the public is more than ready to start with the um, with the civil disobedience. So coming up with today's logic, uh, with today's subject, the foreign policy and how to prevent the foreign intervention on the policies of the Sudan. So we all know that there are several type of interventions, external interventions that could, could occur. We know that there are some regional accesses. We know that there's a uh, certain access which has both Qatar and Turkey, which, is, which represents the Islamic states, which is somewhat uh, close to the um, Muslim Brotherhood. So this is one of the accesses which the previous regime was following. And we have the other axis. We have uh, United Arab Emirates, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and Egypt. They're forming the other axis, which is more prominent, which is more dominant nowadays in the region as a whole. We see, we can see, we can clearly see their effect on both Libya, Yemen, Egypt, and uh, other countries that who has impacted with the Arab Spring. So we want to know, of course, all of those um, Accesses they have their own interest in our country and have and has been affecting the previous regime strongly. So we want to discuss how with the next future. And I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I think some people even say that in order for us to continue our revolution as a whole, we have to join one of those axes. So uh, we have a very important uh, topic to discuss today. Whether we should join either one of, one of those axes, what are the pros and cons of joining them, and can we be independent? Can Sudan grow by itself? Can we com uh, complete our revolution by ourselves and start the new government, the new country, the new Sudan? Can we do it all by ourselves without joining or with complete independence from those axes? So uh, if anyone would like to um, give their comment on this subject in particular before we start, any participants who would like to join regarding the following policy of the Sudan? All right, so uh, I think that we're going to dig deeper with the subject itself. We're going to give, uh, uh, we're going to elaborate further on the subject, and uh, then we will start the discussion phase. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Teacher Muhammad Al Fatih, for such explanation. And as you know, the topic of today is uh, foreign policy, 
and uh, uh, foreign policy is a program uh, for each candidate. Uh, for example, in the United States, if um, a candidate wants to run for presidency, uh, should come with a very clear vision about how uh, is how is he going to, um, uh, for example, deal with the countries around. Because Sudan as a country in Africa, and Africa is a part of, uh, let's say, a continent um, from the world or part of the world. So that means you're going to have um, external relationship with the countries, but this relationship should be built upon uh, some, uh, let's say, uh, some mutual interests. But uh, during the Bashir time, uh, we suffer a lot because uh, all of the, the relationship with the countries was not based on mutual, uh, uh, let's say, benefit between the countries. Sudan was the only country that uh, its citizens suffered a lot from foreign intervention. So we would like to discuss these ideas. Maybe these ideas will, should be uh, maybe big uh, for you, for some of you, not all of you. But uh, try to come here and uh, discuss. Uh, try to organize your points and uh, very confidently let your tongue free. Uh, our purpose is not, for example, discussing the topic as, uh, as let's say, in a deep insight. But uh, it, is, uh, it is a... It is a place that you come here to practice um, English language, pra practice speaking English language. And one of the ways of learning English is practice. And as it is said that, practice makes perfect. So we are going to practice learning English. Uh, don't care about making mistakes. Um, uh, you know, mistakes uh, are always there. And there is um, a, a book uh, in learning English called The Significance of Learners' Mistakes. When you, when you make mistakes, it is uh, uh, it is sign or uh, what it called indication that you are learning. So don't care about making mistakes. Try to come here very confidently and uh, let your tongue free. So I would like to open the opportunities for you right now and the chances for you. So what do you think about foreign policy of Sudan before a revolution, before Bashir time? What do you think about it? Yes. Time is yours, actually. Yes. A foreign policy. What does foreign policy mean to you? Is it important for a country to have a, a foreign policy with other countries, or it is not important? So these are the questions that we have. Try to come here and participate with us. So, teacher Muhammad Al Fatih, do, do you yes? Yeah. So before we begin with the subject of the foreign policy, we have to look at Sudan from uh, different perspectives. Okay, so we have to see ourselves as a country. Where exactly do we stand from the world perspective? Of course, we as an African country uh, located in the east side of Africa. So this is an axis or a, a group of countries by themselves. We are joined with the African Union and we are also affiliated to the uh, Arab nations. Not to also uh, not to mention the East Africa uh, Union. Also, we also have to look at the as I previously mentioned the axes that are currently trying to control. I may say the whole of area. Uh, the main axis that is Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Egypt. So this axis by itself has been affecting the revolution ever since the start. Of. As we have seen in the previous days, we see that the the head of the TMC, the transmission. Tra Transitional uh, Military Council and his vice uh, vice head, uh, Mr. Burhan and Himeti, they were having d multiple visits to this axis in particular. Uh, Burhan has a visit, to, had a visit to um, Egypt and United Arab Emirates, as well as Himeti, who went to Kingdom of Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia. So we can clearly see the dominant effect, the, uh, the omnipresent effect of this axis in particular. And uh, as for the other axis, um, Turkey and Qatar, they're supporting a certain streams or certain opposition, we can say. <coughs> Excuse me. We, they are supporting certain opposition that they want their own interests to work with. Of course, they have uh, some type of reli religious cover over it, but eventually it all comes down to interest. So we have to focus on that also. Which of those accesses do you think that we should join or should we be completely independent from all of those accesses? Of course, eventually we as a country, we must have foreign relations 
that benefits both of the countries or e any other uh, country or union that will be joining eventually. So, uh, what do you think is our best interest? Should we join of those? Uh, should we jo start joining one of those axes, regional axes, whether it's the uh, Saudi Arabia we can say coalition, or the Turkey slash Qatar coalition, or should we just start independently? Uh, with this regard for both axes, we should start independent. We need to, or we can do it completely by ourselves. Of course that we can, but we should not forget that those two axes have already been present in the policy of Sudan ever, ever since, like from the previous 20 to 30 years. And they're still controlling a lot of sectors, not to mention their uh, economic interest in our country, whether it's agriculture, whether it's oil, whether it's livestock. So they have an omnipresent effect in our policy ever since whether we like it or not. So in this point in particular, we need to know, or maybe you have, you, if you can give us your opinion in this uh, subject in particular, because it's very important. What do you think that we should do as a country? Should we join one of those axes or should we go independent from them? So if there's any participants who would like to come and join and start speaking, of course, I know that uh, this stage is somewhat scary, spooky, but uh, trust me, it's not. I mean, you can sit here and give us your opinion and we are more than happy to hear you. So if we have any participants who would like to join, you're more than welcome to do so. Any participants? You could just uh, give an introduction about yourself and what do you think about the topic. If you have any points that you want to discuss, it doesn't have to be that specific. Anything that is related to the Sudan's foreign policy or future foreign policy, I may say. If you have any point you would like to discuss or give highlight, uh, you are more than happy to. We are more than happy to accept you here. I guess it's kind of idle today, so yeah, we still have the to continue along with it. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Teacher uh, Muhammad Al Fatih. And uh, really, uh, you you have to come here and participate. Uh, you don't have to be perfect. Your English shouldn't have to be perfect. Uh, just come here and express yourself. Uh, we know that the topic is very difficult. You need to have a lot of information, and then come here and express your information. But um, regarding the points that mentioned by teacher Mohammed Al-Fatih, he said that there is two coalitions. Coalition of Qatar, Turkey, and Iran, this uh, one coalition, uh, which is supports um, Islam, uh, let's say, uh, Islamic, uh, uh, let's say, um, politics. And then the second po uh, coalition is about Saudi Arabia, um, Emirates, and Egypt. Do you agree that Sudan should follow or join one of these uh, coalition. Do you agree that? Or or do you think that uh, Sudan should be independent and shouldn't deal with this uh, foreign foreign relation with the countries? Yeah, so these are the points. For the newcomers, I would like to uh, retell you, or let's say, uh, tell you the topic of today, the uh, Sudan foreign policy. What do you think about Sudan uh, foreign policy uh, regarding uh, foreign policy during Bashir period? During Bashir period, uh, Sudanese citizens or Sudanese people suffer a lot from, uh, mis, let's say, misrelationship or bad relationship with the uh, external uh, affairs with, with other countries. For, for example, it wasn't based on, uh, let's say, mutual benefit between Sudan and other countries. And as a result, that Sudan, Sudanese uh, policies was um, selling out, let's say, lands of Sudan. For example, what happened in Sawakin? Sawakin has been given to Turkey. And what happened for, 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 for let's say, um, um, uh, let's say that uh, soldiers in, in Yemen. We have Sudanese soldiers in Yemen right now fighting uh, for Saudi Arabians. So do you agree with this uh, foreign policy or you, you disagree? Just try to come here, be brave enough, try to come here and participate. Very hard club for the guy, the first participant, very hard club for him. Welcome. Sagatat ma sagatat. Hatta lo sagatat. Yes, welcome. Hello. Uh, good evening. My name is Bedreddin Al-Bashir. 
so uh, thank you so much uh, for this uh, session. And I would like also to say uh, about uh, the foreign policy of the Sudan country and what uh, we are demand as the people of Sudan. So um, anyone knows that uh, the foreign policy of Sudan in, in al-Bashir regime, it was terrible. And we suffer a lot. We suffer a lot about the uh, relationship with other country. And we, we, uh, we, don't, we, we doesn't uh, benefit anything from uh, that uh, relationship. We need a relationship that can bring the benefit uh, to the people of Sudan. We need uh, the relationship that, that based on uh, bilateral bilateral uh, benefits uh, we now we totally refuse or totally reject the uh, participation of our military in Yemen this also can affect uh, our nation as a Sudanese um, and we know that Sudan is the largest largest country in Africa and we have a lot of resources if we use them the problem is miss uh, administration or mismanagement of our resources and also we we know that our country is diverse and also our people are different we, we, we uh, the, the, the community or the society of Sudan uh, consists a lot of ethnic group and we need to manage this ethnic group in order uh, to be a stronger nation and also uh, to build a database for peace and also to build a, a, a tolerance uh, among our people. We, now we demand a civil lead government because we know that uh, the civil uh, government can also uh, bring our people rights and also bring our, our people demands and we will inshallah progress a lot and a lot. We refuse the uh, the the relation with other people without our people getting benefit. So um, thank you so much for uh, this session, and really I appreciate what uh, youth do in this country, and uh, also this revolution based on uh, youth. And inshallah, as soon as possible, we will get what we need. As soon as possible, we will live together. Uh, as Western people, Eastern people, and people who live in Northern Sudan, and also people live in uh, South Sudan. We just need to understand our uh, ethnic group. We just need to understand our culture and appreciate this culture uh, in order to build our nation, in order to build our uh, infrastructure that the uh, last government this. Uh, destroy. Thank you so much for this session. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the gentleman right here, he has focused on very important points, which is mainly the mismanagement of our resources here as a country. So we all know that the previous regime has not utilized our resources properly, and mostly for the interest of the other countries, unfortunately, not our country. So we need to focus on our resources eventually, and hence we should act accordingly when it comes to foreign policy, which is to properly manage our resources and properly manage our administration. and act accordingly uh, to the benefit of Sudan as a whole. We have another participant over here if you'd like to come and join. Please round up a pass for him. Introduce yourself and speak about, uh, for, the, for those of you who just came, our topic today is about the for foreign policies of the Sudan and how to prevent the uh, how to prevent the external intervention in our policy. We all know that the TMC is currently uh, working along with the coalition of uh, Saudi Arabia, United Arab, United Arab Emirates, and Turkey, and sorry, Egypt. And uh, we want to grow as an independent nation, regardless of those coalitions. So, uh, what can we do to prevent those type of uh, interventions in our country? What can we do exactly? How to in order for us to gain our in independence? independence and uh, guard our interests. So please introduce yourself, sir, and uh, speak about this topic. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for having me holding the opportunity to speak uh, from al Qiyad al Amma. And uh, my name is uh, Bandak, and uh, I 
I'm one of those people uh, that. Uh, okay. Is it clear? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me do uh, appreciate this session again and uh, my thanks, my appreciation to all of you. And uh, my name is Bandak, and uh, I have graduated from Faculty of Veterinary Medicine. And uh, the topic, it is really interesting, a uh, very interesting topic, but uh, for somehow it's difficult for somehow. Let me to stand. Yes, it is sir. better for me to, to speak. Okay, so this topic actually is uh, uh, difficult for somehow to speak about, to be with some axes, with uh, uh, the axis of Emirates, Syria, Egypt, or Qatar, Turkey axis. So we have to get away from this axis. We have to start with the axis of Sudan, just. So it has nothing to do with our benefit. It has nothing to do with our patriotism. So we have to focus just with Sudan. I let us to speak about how can we develop Sudan country. Sudan country, as we know, we, are, uh, we have a very rich country, actually. But as the previous speaker say that we have a problem of mismanagement and misleading because we have a terrible leaders here in Sudan. And uh, the political Islam, that uh, the, the, the first victim of political Islam is Islam itself. So we have to focus Nowadays, there are many propaganda that uh, lead us to, to speak about how to separate religion from, uh, from, uh, from the state or from the, uh, that uh, I can say, to separate religion from our life. I, uh, it is. It has nothing to do to speak about such topic. All of us, we know that Sudan country is Islamic country. So we have to focus on how to develop Sudan. If I can say that about livestock development, it has nothing to do to tell you how many surah or how many ayah that inside your mind in order to have a job. It has nothing to do with your job. Aha, aha, okay. So, my point, what I'm trying to make, is to focus with our country, just to be patriot, to have a patriot, to speak about Sudan. And let us to get away from uh, the propaganda of other countries. Propaganda that lead us to fight each other. So the topic as I mentioned is pretty difficult to speak about the axis. Me, one of them, one one, one of those people that uh, I refuse to move with any propaganda. There is hidden agenda behind any propaganda. So we have to focus. Uh, how to develop Sudan country, this is the issue, this is the main point. This is the main reason that let us to start here and to speak about uh, changing the regime. So, to be clear and to figure out what inside my mind, I don't to speak more about the axis, actually, because uh, it is very narrow. It is so little to speak about uh, the, the axis. My point that what I'm trying to make, ladies and gentlemen, is to focus how to develop. If you are a doctor, so what is uh, the mission and what is the vision that you have? Speaking about policy, just it is not enough to say that I am with those or I am, uh, I am opposing other people is what we are able 
to deliver for our country. What is the message behind this decision right now is to spread awareness among the people. We have to be aware enough. What is the reason behind coming for this place right now? It's just to discuss English language? Actually not. The main reason is to change people's mind, to spread awareness. And uh, the simple fact of the matter is that peace and justice and freedom, this is our slogan right now, isn't it? So how to put them into practice? How to put freedom into practice? Not to say just freedom. And actually, we didn't deal with freedom with each other. How to practice justice? How to practice uh, equality? How to stay away from tribalism, segregation, and determination? This is the way how to get with, with Sudan country. And okay, so I'm not going to be on my speech, and uh, my thanks and my appreciation for this uh, initiation. And uh, I appreciate such initiation because we are going to deliver message for the whole entire world. It is a global message. And uh, thank you again. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. We do appreciate your participation. So uh, for the newcomers, we are going to remind you the topic. Our topic today is about Sudan foreign policy and how are we going to uh, prevent foreign intervention in the Sudan. So it is quite complicated or big topic, but try to look at this topic from different angles. And uh, the English that you have, come here and express your thoughts. So we are going to take this guy. So very hard clap for him. Very hard clap. Okay, good evening. Rashid Omar. First, let me say freedom, just peace, and justice. I really do appreciate for those teachers because they are doing great job. And I hope soon to the next country, this state to turn to the radio or television program in order to spread the awareness more and more. Uh, foreign publicity. Guys, before we go to this stop, let us ask our, ourselves a question. Or let us face the reality. Now we are in very terrible situation. Time is not yet to talk about those things. And even the military council, who gave them the rights in order to go to speak about our issues right now. We didn't give them this right yet. Because we are still demanding our government to be civil. And they are denying this. So we are a nation here in, in military quarter. We are, saying, we are not saying to them, or we didn't give them the right, didn't give them the right in order to speak about ourselves. Because we do need to build ourselves inside Paris. Yeah, we cannot like live alone because it's like uh, human things. We, ca we ca couldn't be independent because we need to deal with others' country according to benefits that we get, we want. And the countries like Qatar and Saudi Arabia, we don't, they need us because we are Sudanese, we have a lot of things. We are satisfied for a lot of things. We need people to follow us, not we are going to follow them. Because even historically, where where was Qatar when we were like great force in this world? Where them? So 
my message to them or to Miller Reconciling, Miller Reconcil, yeah, that is not your business. Until our civil government comes, that it can decide whether we can be with them or not. Because eventually, yeah, we need them in order to, like, investment or a lot of projects that waiting us. But the time now is not for such thing. Um, my message to us as Sudanese nation, we have to do what's supposed to be done by us. We have to rebuild ourselves. Because I know, and everybody knows, the previous regime nearly collapsed a lot of things with others, other countries. We are in need to rebuild these things, and then we can decide Qatar or Saudi Arabia or USA or Canada, who will, who will we deal with them? This is my point. Thank you, Allah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rashid. Uh, you had a very good point, uh, which is to start with ourselves first as a country, to go independent, and then start with dealing with uh, external relations. Unfortunately, I would like to point a certain point that the other coalitions, whether it's uh, United States, United Arab Emirates, and uh, sorry, you know, uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Egypt, they, and also we have Turkey, Iran, and uh, Qatar in the other coalition. They will not, they will not wait for us to start and uh, start building ourselves as a new country. They will, they have already intervened with the relation. They have already intervened with the revolution. We can clearly see that the TMC is joining talks with them and going all the way to Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and UAE. We can also see the opposition, the opposition, our representatives, the uh, the Sudanese. Uh, Professionals Association and the Coalition of Freedom and Change, they're already having discussions at the embassies in the Saudi embassy, in the Egyptian embassy, and we can also see the uh, United States ambassador and the foreign uh, countries ambassadors joining us at the Syrian as we are talking right now. So foreign policy has already has its effect on the revolution, whether we like it or not. It's an omnipresent thing that we need to deal with. And at the same time, we need to deal uh, with, in the future, of course, with, with, with regards to mutual benefit. But right now, we need to focus on building our new country. We need to focus on having a civil government, a civil control of the whole country, without any intervention, uh, any intervention from whosoever. Whether it's the TMC, whether it's the foreign countries or whatever, our country has to be completely civil in order for us to have the full control on our country. So uh, that was my part on this. Yeah, we have two participants. Please join us, sir, and uh, you can talk afterwards. Please introduce yourself and talk for two to three minutes. Uh, hello, everybody here. Uh, I'm so glad to, to talk to Steve. So more gladly here. Uh, my name is Muhammad Bakrim. Let me uh, greet and salute all the, the foundation of the Sudanese Researchers Initiative and all the in English supporters of the English teachers. Uh, there is, we want to talk about the, uh, the, the policy, the situation, the current situation which you are, which is facing in Sudan. There is there is the power, the power of, there is uh, the power of masculine, the power of weapons. Those people who call it themselves, they are control us, they have no power to control ourselves, to control us. We have the power. The power of masculine, the power of weapons, they are do nothing. But our mind, our, our consciousness is better than those people. Those people, when the revolution is start, those people who call the, the transitional military councils and the militias and those uh, militias, they are going to save our revolutions, but they can do nothing. But but they can't. We are when the revolution start, they are uh, they are sit 
from the from the uh, f from the far as they are observing us, but they do nothing. But when the revolution succeeds, they are trying to save our revolutions. Those people there uh, who sending there in the foreign country in the in the uh, in the Saudi Arabia and the in uh, in Qatar, and they just looking for money and just they are looking for money just I want to send a message to the military tradi traditional military council this revolution is not not for for for, for, uh, for those people this revolution is for all Sudanese people there are a lot of people they are dying this blood we, we, we are not going to uh, to uh, to forget that blood which he uh, which he had, uh, thrown there on the street, but we want to build our country as the the, the developing country. So we have to uh, we 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 gonna talk about the foreign thing which we are going to uh, the things which is going right now. We are going to, we are be consciousness. And we are honest and do uh, and uh, and uh, we we uh, we are we uh, we we are so conscious to to build our country without any uh, anything that come from the house outside. So I'm appreciate to participate for this uh, session. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. We do appreciate your participation. So for the newcomers, our topic is about Sudan foreign policy and how are we going to uh, prevent uh, foreign intervention in Sudan. So this is our topic. And uh, some, some facts that I want to add that every country around the world has its own foreign policy. And this foreign policy is based on uh, mutual benefits and mutual respect. But uh, the consequences of a very bad uh, foreign policy during during Bashir period, we have got uh, Sudanese forces and troops in Yemen right now fighting for Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabians. So what do you think about this? Um, so this is problem. So the coming government, civilian-led government, is going to have a very big burden on it because uh, it is going to and negotiate all these issues. Um, uh, what do you think about this? Are you going to withdraw if, for example, if you were elected to be uh, the coming president of Sudan? Are you going to withdraw immediately the troops of Sudan, Sudan troops, um, or are you going to let them uh, there? So the chances are yours right now. So we're going to take this guy, and after that, so welcome. So all of you, Sagatat, Ma Sagatat, Hatta Lao Sagatat, welcome. Very hard clap for him. Very hard clap. Uh, first of all, uh, um, Yahya Muhammad, uh, teacher in Kibet International School. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank so all participants and panelists that discuss about the very important issues. And first, I would like to also the condolence of women who passed away today. Uh, we do. Uh, I hope that uh, will sleep peacefully or peacefully in their grave. Uh, you know, the problem is still continuous. And secondly, I would like also to appreciate the strict that uh, successfully hundred percent today. Uh, I was in uh, Sudan Bank, and it was amazing. With the problems happened yesterday, it was. You know, not you know supposed to happen today, uh, TMC, and they know what's going on. So, I would like to dip in the topic that foreign policy in Sudan. I would like to ask you a question: Who give the permission to the TMC to go to around the different countries, especially Egypt, Emirates, and Saudi Arabia? They are still not, you know, have, you know, uh, permission to the uh, regime, exactly. 
So we are still here, you know, sticking and they are around, you know, around and eating chickens to the different countries. So we are still, people are bad cheating, people are killing. Second, you know, those countries, they have their own benefit. First, to take Egypt. Egypt has a problem because if today the civil governments come, so Halab is going to be a problem to them. And I do believe we have troops just only in Yemen. If we bring back, Egypt will be in terrible. And I know that Sudanese government are one of the strongest government in Africa and all over the world. We have been defeated, you know, during the World War. World War I and World War II, our troops have participated and they defeated different, you know, uh, countries. So, secondly, Emirat is not just only the troops that in Yemen. Emirat has a problem that, you know, if civil government has come, they're going to feel in a terrible because most of the engineers, doctors working there, even if in, you know, al Sudan, the station is going to be, you know, one of the most important, in fact, in Sudan, and they don't like because they don't like Sudan go for war. And they just only interfere, even if Saudi Arabia. They just only want their own benefit. Why this government, they don't want to hand over to TMC? Because also, the last, the Bashir regime is still in the cherries. It's still, you know, guy, open your mind. Because before two days, I was in Ariad Street, and those people there, you know, was protesting that we like, we like to begin be back. Believe me or not, I was there. Why? Because these people is, you know, the government has fleeing. This is kind of joke, guys. Believe me, this is kind of joke. And now we are trying to win our message. That's why last time I talked, we are going to send our message not just only here, and we're sending our message with different language, not just only the language which you are talking, with different language to all world. Listen, why our media is still, they are not, you know, bringing the good news, brings the news that is happening now. The, you know, today what's happening, Al Jazeera and Al Hadith, they bring the street that happened in banks of Sudan, but our TVs, there's no one's known Why? Because Al Bashir regime is still, even in media. Guys, we are here sticking until we bring up our civil, you know, army, and then we know that our foreigners, you know, you know, putting us policy, we will know that how to change. Because every country has its own benefit. And we're not going to say, no, we don't like you. We like you, but what is your purpose in coming in our country? If you have, if we get benefit, so you are going to also get the benefit. Not just I'm going to say, we don't like Imarat. No. If we get benefit from you, welcome. If Ethiopia, we get the benefit, we are welcome. So that, you know, the policy, so, you know, MTC cannot able to play this policy unless the militant, you know, civil army come in this country. And then we can able to eradicate Al-Bashir regime that is still playing the game of that game. And uh, thank you, guys. Thank you very much, sir. So the teacher right here gave us a very fruitful insight about the, our topic today. Okay, for, so for the newcomers, our discussion today is about the foreign policy of Sudan and how to prevent other countries from intervening with our revolution. Because we all know that currently some coalitions working against our revolution. Unfortunately, they are preparing a counter-revolution to demean all of the progress they had, that we have made so far. So how can we, so the important question to answer right now, if I would like everyone to participate, how can we prevent the external prevention in, uh, prevention in our country? How can we prevent such uh, negative, of course, we're talking about the negative prevention in, in our revolution. So how can we prevent or stop that from, you know, de uh, demising all of the progress that we have uh, came across so far? So if you can please join us, sir. So the fine. Um, yes, uh, we would like to welcome Mr. Muhammad Abdushakur and his friend here. 
Muhammad, can you come here? You, you are the two. Come. So very hard club for them. Very hard club. First of all, Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, good evening. My name is Ayman Al-Taib. I'm an engineer, Sudan University. Uh, first of all, we have prepared says in Arabic. So we need to send our gratitude and appreciation. If you look at the project and reflection here, we have Sudanese Research Foundation. Could you ask ourselves questions? Who are creating this page, Facebook page that collect all these people? There is a name behind this. His name, Anwar Dabala. Please give her clap for this man. Yes. I don't know him, but I, I, I am in this group. This person, he is working very, very, very nicely. Day in, day out, I used to see in this page scholarships and topics and so many things that used to help Sudanese young generation. Thank you so much, Mr. Anwar Dabala. And thank you, Kiamans, most of you. As I tell you, my name is Ayman Al-Taib. Let me get down inside the point. The point says, we're talking about Sydney's foreign policy, right? Sydney's policy, uh, foreign policy. And how to prevent the external intervention. So before I jump inside the point, look at the word Sudan. How many letters do you have in Sudan? No Sudanese, Sudan. Four letters, right? S-U-D-A-N. We need to analyze these letters. If you look at the first letter, is S. S. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be very, very, very specific. To be what? Specific letter number one. Two, to unite ourselves, regardless who we are. South, East, Center, regardless. Right? We need to be united. United, united, united is a power. D, our dignity, our model, our conception, our Sudanese traditional. We have, thank you so much for coming. And we have A. We need to achieve everything in the right time. Our dignity, our everything in the right time. And we have the last letter is N, nation. Nation of hope, nation of power, nation of dignity, nation of, of who we are with the shape that we want, not what they want. So, Sudan, it has two parties, right? Who are fighting against Sudan comes. We have the party number one, Saudi, Emirate, Egypt, right? Party number one, so number two, we have Turkey, Qatar, instead of Iran, right? So, who we are planning for? The question is, are we playing mind or open mind? We need to identify ourselves with who we are, not who identify who we are, not, not give them chance to identify us who they are. We need to give ourselves a name. Sudan, enough is Sudan. We need to build a foreign policy with every nation regardless who they are. If you have a book, the book has two pages. You have last page and open page. If you look at the ex-government of the Fila, Umar Bashir, this person who left away, now we have the new page. The new page, this page opened by the young Sudanese generation. Young Sudanese generation. Those who are devolved, who are making a revolution. Those who are passed away, like uh, teacher Muhammad, sorry, teacher Ahmad, Atai, uh, Ahmad Al-Khair, and so many doctors who are passed away. These people, they are introduced themselves to build Sudan, not disappoint them again here in Sudan. We need to build a very, very, very strong relationship with the people outside of the world. Before I sum up my point of view, I need each and everybody here say with me, courage, please say with me, courage. 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 It takes courage to be exceptional. Say with me, it takes courage to be exceptional. 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 It takes courage to be educated. 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 It takes courage to be smart. It takes courage to be smart. It takes courage to be smart. It's not over. Till I win. Till we win. Till we win. And we will win. We will win. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you so much. Uh, we do appreciate your participation and you motivated us like uh, Les Brown. So we have uh, somebody who is well-traveled, uh, somebody who is a representative for African Commission. So, yes, Peace Commission, we would like to welcome you and welcome Mr. Mohammed Abdul Shakur. Very hard love for him. So one of the sayings of uh, Mr. Abdul Shakur that Sudan must leave Arab leagues. 
Agree. So, what is what's your philosophy Agree. behind that? Agree. So, yeah, welcome. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mohammed Shakur, and uh, I am the former Commissioner for Peace and Security to the African Youth Commission. I also was the uh, Youth and Peace Ambassador to the African Youth Dialogue 2016 and also 2018. I am currently the Nasser Leadership uh, Awarded in Cairo. Um, we have just, you know, um, we have found that out a few days ago about Sudan leaving the Arab League. I think it is a part of our foreign policy. When we talk about foreign policy, we talk about airlines and we talk about economic and we talk about geographical foreign policy. For example, when we say Sudan foreign policy, when we talk about Sudan regional integration, where do we integrate? Are we integrating to the Gulf? In, in terms of geography, are we integrating to the Gulf countries? Are we part of Ta'awun Khalij al Arabi? Where are we exactly geographically located? Now, one of our problems that we sometimes take time to say that we are North Africans. We come back when we say we are East Africans. We come back, we say we are Arab League. Now, when I say Sudan withdraw from Arab League or exit Arab League, some people say that you are discriminating the Arab part of Sudan. I believe Sudan is not a country. Sudan is nations. We are different nations in one place. Now, and these different nations, this diversity could be used. Now, the regional integration for us as Sudanese people, what will happen when we integrate peacefully with East Africa in terms of water policy, in terms of trade policy, in terms of economics policy? Where do we belong to? That's the first one we have to talk about. When we talk about airlines, if Sudan is part of Asif al Hazm, the question is that why and what reason makes Sudan part of that war? The war that we as Sudanese people have no part in our one. The war that as Sudanese people we did not even vote to go for. Look back at Obama time. Obama come to America with foreign policy when he said I would like to withdraw troops from Iraq. That has given him much more votes. I am not ready to, to let my 14 years brother who's supposed to be at school to be armed and taken to Yemen fighting for a war that I have no part in that. That's a very important part we have to understand. The second thing, if we belong to Arab countries because of economics, that's fantastic when we talk business. Trump is the worst president ever come to the United States. But he won because he talks business. Now, if we talk business, what business do we gain from Arab Emirates? What business do we get from Saudi Arabia? It is enough that our Sudanese professionals have built Saudi Arabia, and, 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 and it is enough that we have taught in, in, in there. Now, if we talk about business, United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia are taking business out of us, not we are taking business out of them. I am not ready to be as a Sudanese person go and live in Saudi Arabia or any other Arab countries with the kafala that you are belong to the person who give you the kafala. That is not a dignity you talk about. That is not integrity we talk about. We talk about a foreign policy that bring, you know, bring greatness to the country. A foreign policy that when you go, I have been to more than 25 African countries and some other Arab countries. Now, the first thing, when I go to an Arab country, I don't see myself welcome as a person. When I go to an African country, I see myself great. But one important thing that President Bashir regime has left us with a broken foreign policy in the region, a broken foreign policy in the international community. Where does Sudan locate it? Nobody knows what exactly Sudan. The only one thing people know about Sudan is the word Janjaweed. When you say I'm coming from Sudan, they ask you, hey, how about Janjaweed? Nobody knows that we have two Niles. Nobody knows that Khartoum is the, is the only city that confluence two Niles. Why we don't look at that? When you, when, when you just Google Sudan, you only see weapons, you only see bad things. You can't see pyramids in, in North Sudan. You can't see Adindir. You can't see Jabal Mara. You only see fightings. You only see people who are carrying guns and weapons and doing bad things. 
This is the foreign policy that President Bashir left us with. But what we're going to do right now is that I am from here asking, not, I'm not talking about the military council. Military council, it, it is not an institution that I, I talk to because it does not represent the Sudan until now. The military council is going out for personal representation. When we talk about the history of four years back when Al Bashir signed treaty with Saudi Arabia to participate in Hasif and Al Hasb, that was Al Burhan was was a direct supervisor to the troops. Himeti was a technical and General Adwa was technical. Those generals, I am following the, the history. Now Himeti himself said that uh, uh, 400 uh, troops were killed in number, 800. 50 something were killed in there. Our troops are facing the most dangerous. Our troops have been used as, as a barricade in the front line, in there. But the question is right now, until now, we have 14,000 troops over, plus around 15,000 troops. Why we, we take our children to fight in there? I want to finalize another thing. Uh, I, I, I was part of two. Uh, 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 two declarations. One, the declaration of the African passport. When President Bashir was there, I was there in Kigali City, Rwanda, when all presidents were there to sign. Yes, of course, Sudan was there, but our president, he did not sign, uh, he did not agree that we are going to take the African passport. My idea is that if Africa is going to have one passport in terms of integration, in terms of foreign policy, in terms of, of identity, yes, Sudan has a big number of different nations. You categorize yourself as an Arab, it's okay, fantastic, you remain with your great Sudanese passport. You categorize as an African, you can remain with your Sudanese passport and have that African passport to have integration. Number two, another treaty, ha another agreement has been done, the Africa Continental Trade Movement. The trade movement is a movement that will allow Africans to do business, young people to do business everywhere. We did not sign that because President Bashir believed that as Arab country, who so called us as Arab country, we are not going to be part of that, are fully accommodating ourselves with that trade, continental trade movement. Imagine, you are, I, I'm doing business in different countries in East Africa. Imagine yourself, you want to go to Tanzania today, this evening, you go. Tomorrow you want to go to Kenya using the same, the, 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 the same visa. After tomorrow you want to go to Rwanda, use the same visa. You are doing business regionally. You are doing business continentally. We don't need that. that. Let's look at our bad foreign policy. There, there was a train supposed to be uh, built, railway, supposed to be built from Port Sudan to Senegal to, to South Africa. That train is going to connect all the continents. The part from Port Sudan to Senegal, that's the part of the President Al Bashir. This he is did Chinese, not do that. Right? The Chinese is doing it. Even, yeah, but Sudan did not take part of that until yes, now. Yes. What I'm saying is that our foreign policy has been broken. We are not taking part in all of those things. Now, one more final point for all of us, gentlemen. What I wanted us to do is that, to read what is the continental trade that has been signed in Africa. What are the other ones? I have no problem that we are part of the Arab League, but I have problem we have we are part of Arab League according to Arab opinion, according to the Arab's decision. Yes, I can be part of the Arab League, but according to what I see, it's okay. According to how much I get in our GDP, according to how much I get in in, in, in the economics of the country, I believe. I believe that they have taken everything out of our country. They have taken our professionals, they have taken our money, they have taken our resources, they have taken everything, and they are still fighting to, 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 to make us in there. Two, only two important things. That they need our troop to fight in Yemen. Why we go and kill Yemen there? We still have a lot to do here in our country. It's about I really money. appreciate it. It's about our money. It's, it's our, about money, but that money does not come to the GDP, does no. not come to the country. No, it comes to individuals. Yes. It comes to individuals. Yep. So those individuals, they are supposed to be cracked down so that our country gain its, its greatness. What can we say to the Yemeni people as people? How can we face people that we kill unreasonably? We're That's what we We've talk about. Used. Yes. After we take the Madania, after we take our country back, we would like to reform the foreign policy of this country, regionally and internationally and continentally. I really appreciate it. So, Sakatat Ma Sakatat. Sakatat Ma Sakatat. We make it in English. Foreign or not fallen, we stay. Repeat it with me. Fallen or not fallen, we stay. Fallen or not fallen, we stay. Fallen or not fallen, we stay. Even if fallen, we stay. Thank you very much. So Thank you very much. I do remember Kwame Nkrumah in Africa. 
1979 when he talked about Africa. And you know, during the World War II, Europe was united because they linked it, they opened borders and they've been united. Do you think that, and I think it's not an uh, issue to discuss now, but this is the conception of how can we see the future of Africa. Do you think that we, if we open Africa as a whole with one open border, you will succeed like what Europe did during the World War II in the previous time? Well, well in short, thank you very much. Um, uh, I I suppose to stand, as you remind me, great leaders like Inform and Informa of Ghana and Julius Junero of Tanzania and uh, Patrice Lumumbo of Congo and yes, Nelson Mandela and the current Kagame of, 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 of Rwanda and Magofuli of Tanzania and all great leaders of Africa and yes, Jamal Abdel Nasser of Egypt and uh, I cannot forget the, the, the great late leader of Sudan, Dr. Jongoran, I call him him the lost hope of Sudan when Dr. Jongoran told us that we cannot build a country with being Muslim, Christian, Arab or Africans but by building a Sudanism. Sudanism is a term that must be must, must be appreciated. Now, in short, why Africa trade movement has been signed, it's because, for example, now if I want to travel, if I want to travel internally in Sudan, I'm going to pay a lot. To travel from Khartoum to, to Niala, you need to pay more than 7,000 SDGs. To travel to Emirate, you will pay like 10 or 11. To travel from Khartoum, like last, uh, last month, I, I was traveling from Khartoum to West Africa, Gambia, I am supposed to pay $2,500. $2,500 is a very big money for a young person going for business to pay or going for things to talk. Now, the trade, continental trade has come as a result of, of uh, uh, easing the trade movement for use integrating young people across the, the four African regions or three Af uh, five African regions to integrate in business, to integrate in politics, and to integrate in education and everything. For example, it's easy for me to go every weekend to Kenya and, and, and come back, to go to, to, to every other country and come back. If we make, there is nothing called open border, but there are some foreign integration agreement. Okay, we can have open visa, we can have easy travel document that allow us to travel and to move anything. In Europe, there is no open border in Europe. There is no open border in Europe. But there are some agreement that when you have Schengen visa, you can cross those borders. There is no open border everywhere in the world, but there are some agreement to ease the movement. There are some agreement that can help people to move. I believe we cannot be separated from the region. We must walk uh, 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 geographically, we must walk everything together. I believe if we have that agreement, we can make Sudan great and we can make the region great. Thank you very much. I'm very sorry for taking part in time. Uh, we do appreciate the comments and uh, the answering of the question. And it was really a very comp comprehensive answer. Really, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And he deserved to be an ambassador of Sudan, actually. <laughs> okay. uh, thank you very much. We do appreciate the points. For the newcomers, our topic is about Sudan foreign policy and how are we going to uh, prevent foreign intervention in the Sudan. So chances are open for you. So the coming guy is, welcome teacher, a very hard club for him, very hard club. Okay, good. Uh, I think it is only uh, one minute, so two minutes I will finish. Uh, anyhow, my name is Suleiman Mohamed Umar. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, it is really, you know, I'm so happy and so pleasure. It is, you know, to be in front of lovely faces. But the people talk about um, intervention or talk about um, what so called uh, foreign political intervention, right? So, for this all, we should have to ask ourselves. You know, who allowed them so as to enter? You know, if, if you would like to stop this uh, political intervention or external uh, intervention, first of all, we should have, we should have to talk about the, the what's so called uh, our authorities or those whom pretend to be the leaders because they have a self-interest. Those whom they accept them so as to enter. 
And those political, I mean, uh, political leaders, they are not representatives, but they represent themselves. And that is why they, they, they lead them so as to enter, because they have a self-interest between two of them, or both of them. If we talk about the military councils, or uh, transition of military councils, they have what so called you know, self-interest. At the same time, for, 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 for the other people who come from outside or other countries, they have self-interest. And they know that if they accepted that we implemented what so-called civil, really we are going to um, transfer our um, what so-called, uh, uh, you know, I mean, they, 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 those people, they think that may, uh, may will generate as such things which happen to Sudan, to their countries. Because they are afraid for what did in Sudan, they will be done over there. So that's why they are going to, you know, to interfere so as to stop as such things will not happen over there. Uh, for our leaders, they, they, they receive money, a lot of money. So we uh, sell our blood to the people because of a little bit of money. We know that. So if we would like to, ex to, to stop this, first of all, we should have to speak about those who are supposed to be leaders. They are not really leaders because leaders will not sell the, their blood to the other people for except money. And thank you. Okay, thank you, Prime Minister. He, ha he gave us a very good insight of our subject today for the newcomers. Once again, our subject of discussion today is the foreign policy of Sudan and how to prevent uh, external in intervention in it. So uh, we continue our discussion. If uh, anyone has any points that he need, that they, they want to add in this point in particular, any participants, sir? All right. So uh, we'll be continuing with the discussion till someone else pops out. So there's a cert, uh, there are several points that we need to look. So when we talk about Sudan, in the the new Sudan, we can say that this is the term that we used to co we used to uh, shout during our demonstrations. The people want to build a new Sudan, a Shab Yurid Bina Sudan Jadid. So this is what we can call the the next phase of the Sudan, the new Sudan. So what should we focus on in terms of foreign policy? What things that we need to uh, practice with other countries, what type of relations that we need with other countries, and what coalitions that we should join as a country. Should we continue with the uh, African Union? Should we continue with the Arab nations? And all of those coalitions, what our stance, what our stance as a new country will be. So uh, this just several questions that uh, we can discuss right here in the discussion. So why if anyone why wants to participate with us, you are more, more than welcome. Why we, why we don't do it all? You can join us, sir, if you want. Please give a round of applause for him, please. Introduce yourself and please speak. I'm American, by the way. Uh, I just say enjoy from my family. It came in like uh, about three weeks ago. And, uh, I'm here for my mom too as well. So, and, uh, hey, you know, so uh, my name is Hayson. I came from America. I live in uh, Los Angeles, California, and uh, I'm here just to visit my mom about uh, three weeks ago. And uh, I want to say hi to everybody in my family. You know, I've been in America for almost 20 years. My question is first, why we don't do it all? Like you know. Why we don't do it to be in Europe and welcome to everybody and to be Arab and be African and be everywhere. So it's all a business is business, you know? It's my question first. The second thing, we're really outside this country. It's a lot of, when I left first, I'm young, you know, almost like 15 years ago. And everybody was to speak English very well. So now I'm really surprised because nobody knows shit what I'm talking about, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry about it, but it's true. And I'm American, by the way. <laughs> So it's a lot. When I go to anywhere, you know, from the airport and uh, start talking English, and everybody like, huh, huh? <laughs> and I want to see, you know, the Kajer, you know, the guys working in the airport. We call him my mom. We call him Kajer. I don't say mama. This is not a Kajer. Doesn't work for the airport. <laughs> I'm sorry. The Kajer is the one following people who are running away in the Puri Street or the. <laughs> so. Uh, and she, he want to say, I want to see your phone while we coming from America. So he tell me, I want to see this. And I say, sir, what, what are you talking about? The phone? He say, yes, I want to see this. And I say, okay, this is my phone. I don't know. I don't have a problem. I coming from USA. 
and I think you guys will see the phone inside the country. But I don't, I don't have nothing. It's my phone. And let me tell you, so you need to call my embassy. It's one eight hundred eight hundred twenty two hundred if you want to do it. You cannot fucking see my phone. I'm sorry. So uh, what I want to say is, you know, it's a lot of people don't. In everybody, we have a lot of great teacher in America. All of them used to be in a Khartoum University. We have a lot of good, you know, my. My family is really is, is doing a good, my mom, she's a psychologist, doctor, she, she used to work at Ahfad University as well, you know, and this people is doing great in America, you know, Sudanese is so smart outside. My cousin is really, he's uh, is, is a good engineer in Phoenix, Arizona. We guys, we pride to, to be Sudanese, we're so smart, but the problem, the country being all these people for almost 30 years, and decide to just, you know, fill the pocket, but yourself, and you don't care about the country, and don't care about the economy as well. So my question is, you guys, you have to be, everybody have to be ambassadors first. Second thing, you know, the American people love Sudanese, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You don't know, but I'm telling you. Because Sudanese, you have a dignity, and every Jew live in New York, I'm telling this, I'm telling anybody. If you want to hire somebody for the money, he's going to hire Sudanese first. I'm telling you right now, you know, because Sudanese is so, Really, very smart. You know, we have a dignity. You don't, you don't care about how you get your stuff, the cost, and then you care about the money first. This is, trust me, I work from when I'm younger, so I know it. You know, and the Jew people they say, "Are you Sudanese? Yeah, from Khartoum. Where we from? Dungula. We're from. <laughs> you know, he know all the places. So we really were almost American in love Sudanese, and you know about it. So I'm telling you, because I live there. You know, and uh, especially you know a lot of Muslim women. When you go to the masjid, the first thing, are you Sudanese? Yeah, do you marry me? Because I know you got more good Muslims. Yeah. <laughs> Send them there. Yeah. Send them there. So I say, listen to me, you know, Sudan is not like it was to be, I'm sorry. If you go to the masjid right now in Sudan, somebody's got to steal your shoes, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you go to the, you know, to the market and you want to buy something, somebody's going to screw you up in the, in the money side. But unfortunately, this is because the government is doing it. But before, when I left when I am young, you know, and I saw it till now, any woman, when she came to, to, to become Muslim, the first thing she say, I want to marry uh, Sudanese. Ask anybody, he know that. Not Saudi, not Arab, not anybody, Sudanese, because we love Sudanese, you have a good heart, and good Muslim, and good to the families, and religion, and Quran, and she want to learn very good Arabic. Unfortunately, when I come back here, I don't see good Arabic. It's a lot of different signs, you know? So this is, this is me, I don't know. It's so hard for me. So you guys, you have to be, uh, that's what I say. We have to be, the, get a good relationship to the foreign and to the whole countries, you know? It's not, when I say Europe, London, America, South Africa, I've been in about 27 countries, by the way. I work for a tourism company. And uh, we do a lot of auction, we buy the coffee from Serbia, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to talk about it, but I, whatever, wherever I go, it's people who love Sudanese. And I'm telling you, Sudanese is proud. Not a government, but the human being, you know, love a human being. And uh, Sudanese is so smart, I'm telling you right now. And I saw them everywhere. When I go to the north, all the way to uh, what I call the... Uh, the cold place, you know, uh, North Dakota, you see Sudanese, you go to the South Dakota, you see Sudanese, you go to the South Africa, you see Sudanese. Go to China, I see Sudanese. I go the, all the way to Russia, and I see Sudanese. So Sudanese is everywhere. I hope you, know, you guys, everybody come back to the country. And uh, the government is really doing so bad for uh, 30 years to, to let everybody go away. But I'm so sorry, and uh, Aid Mubarak, like we say, thank you so much. Uh. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And uh, yeah, in, in in the answer, in his answer to my question, I was asking the important question is that why should why should we continue joining the Arab nations? Should we continue joining the um, uh, African Union and all of the other regional and international coalitions? His answer, of course, was the American answer: go hard, or go home. So I think that he wanted to, you know. Go for all of the above. So uh, he he gave us a good insight and our uh, the international reflection on our Sudanese 
identity as people, not as government, of course. So yeah, I've been in, uh, I've been outside of Sudan also, and I have somewhat of the same reaction that he has had. I'm telling you that most of the people, whenever we say Sudanese, they only think of the good virtue that we have as people. It's not something that we casually say. It's something that I've seen by myself and I've witnessed firsthand. So those type of virtues, I, I'm more than happy to say that they are still there. And I know that somewhat it has been damaged for the previous ten, two, five to ten years. But our virtues, our good virtues, they are still there. And uh, what I've seen over here in the city in the previous 50 to 60 days, I mean, I've seen, I've seen them omnipresent. I've seen all of the good virtues that we have been notorious about. They're still here, and we hopefully they are. The revolution has renewed our virtues that we already have. They're already there, but they have replenished it, which is I'm very glad for it to happen. So if we have, if we have any more participants, Pete. Please come and join. So, in order to renew the subject once more, uh, it's about the Sudan foreign policy and what can we do to prevent the external, the negative external prevention. So, please introduce yourself and speak. So, uh, hello, everybody. Sir, welcome back. Uh, thank you, man. Thank you. So, uh, I guess I will like minimize my points in just two points. First of all, uh, you ask us a question. Uh, if you, you said that we have to uh, be with the Arab or with Africa. In my simple point of view, I agree to be with the African and uh, we leave the Arab uh, alone. All right? I'm not taking it emotionally. Let's take it logically. All right? In the Arab Union, just they are using us just as a shield. Yeah, yeah. All right? If they are sp speaking about Arab, they will never mention a Sudan. The only thing that they will mention it the quick forces, just in Yemen. Yeah, they used our forces there to reach their own goals. And they did this. I don't want to say that we are full, like, no. But they were paying a lot of money for them, for the selfish people in order to serve their hidden agenda. But flashing back to Africa, like, uh, as he mentioned, and as you sa said, okay, like, we had a lot of efforts from Africa to develop our country, to develop our economical as well as like uh, the whole country, S starting from the bottom and, and developing the whole country. We had those offers from, uh, from uh, uh, companies and foreign companies, all right? Like here, they are, the African, they are helping us to enhance our living, but the Arab, just they are using us to enhance their living, all right? So my point is to stand with Africa, and we are proud black people, right? So the other thing is, for the foreign policy, right? Let's, right now, in this period, really, really, we, we are deeply in need to concentrate with our country first, to build, to start building in our country, to replace the old system with the new system that can serve our own goals. Then we can take a look in the foreign policies. And believe me, if we build our country, I mean the interiorly, very good, then each one of the, uh, the foreign people for the foreign countries, they will respect us if they don't want to do this. Flashing back to the history, look in, in Nimeri period, Abu period, if you said in, in the other countries, especially Saudi Arabia, if you said, as I'm a Sudanese, they will respect you. But let's go back for, uh, for the Omar Bashir period. If you said, I'm a Sudanese, they will say that, go and serve, just yes. No respect, all right? We have been dehumanized by the, our government, unfortunately. But believe me, just I have a small message for, for the youth people and all the people, all right? Guys, all of you, you made the history by change, changing the, the system that was ruling us for 13 years. Right? So don't worry it up. Yeah. We have to keep it up. But also, we have to put this in our consideration. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I'm taking a lot of money. We have to put this in our consideration. The start, the, the, the changing, it will never start with the, just the system. It will start from us. We have to change the way that we are thinking, the way that we, are, we want like, to develop our country. We, as a youth people, we have a renewed ideas. 
we have like a very intellectual mind, as he said, right? We have a very intellectual mind. So you seek for the from seek for the information, seek for the best way that to serve you your your country. Don't say that country Sudan it doesn't give me anything. You are going to give him in order to get to take back what you what you give him. All right. So from today and on, no tribalism, no nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. Just Sudan. Right now we put the knife in our neck. We don't have anything. We can't go back. Just fight, fight for your own rights. Then we will see the new Sudan that my brother he was taking, t talking about. We will build it by our own eyes. I'm not trying to motivate you. No, this is the reality, guys. This is the reality. You change the system, and you are going to change the whole country by the way that we, all of us, we want it. From Darfur, South Sudan, from Khartoum, from anywhere, even if from the, th from the sea. We are going to do this, right? So keep it up, just stick with the plan. Don't get, get out. This is, the, this is my message, and thank you very much, all of you. Uh, thank you very much. We do appreciate the points that you uh, added to our discussion. And uh, we talk very much about uh, the Sudan uh, foreign policy during Bashir period. Because the mentality of uh, Bashir period uh, government was really very bad. So as a result of uh, what uh, policies that they adopted, uh, Sudan is imposed financial sanctions. So we are suffering a lot. As Sudanese citizens, we did nothing. But the mentality of, uh, of Bashir government led us to have Sudan right now is accused as a country that supports uh, terrorism in the world. So the coming government, a government that's a civilian-led government, will have a very big burden on it. Because uh, how to adopt a, a foreign policy that's uh, based on mutual respect, uh, based on mutual benefits, and based on diplomatic relationship with the countries. So we have, to, we have a lot of work to do, and you have a lot of ideas, I think, as you're standing here. So we're going to welcome this guy. Uh, yes? Okay, welcome, welcome, sorry. We have two guys here. A very hard club for him, very hard club. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Amr Abdul uh, Firstly, let me uh, like uh, let us thank uh, Sudanese Center uh, Research Foundations for collecting us here, for sharing our ideas. I just have a little point I want to edit. So, uh, yes. In addition to what have been mentioned, that why like uh, the neighbor countries are interfering for our issues, but and uh, unfortunately, just just nowadays. Yeah, it never happened before. We were being killed in the streets. We were live in crisis, but none of those countries have came in order to. Uh, they came in order to help us. They didn't give us any aid that we want, but like uh, the thing that led them interfering to our issues. First thing, which is if we succeed to, uh, if we succeed to like. Uh, to have a civilian government, that thing is going to affect on them, on the part, uh, on the first part, how to, inside their countries, most of them, they have a very bad government, as we were hard. So the citizens over there, they are going to observe that things have been succeeded in Sudan. So tomorrow they are going to cry out for civilian government as well as it been happened and succeeded in Sudan here. So these things, they are very afraid of it to happen. The other thing is, those people who are interfering nowadays, they had contract with previous government, which is for like uh, uh, 15 years after, in order to extract a goal, in order to take a lot of things to their interest. And by this, civilian government is going to stop this contract. You are going to lose a, a lot of money. Is else, uh, and what else? Like uh, we have soldiers, they like uh, saving their, their their boundaries. So by civilian government, we are going to take back our soldiers. So their boundaries is going to be weaker for being attacked. 
these things, uh, this also something like uh, they are very afraid, uh, afraid of it to be happened. And about like uh, the next government, how we will make it like uh, better than it was. I just have like uh, just a little point. Points. First one is like uh, about corruptions. We have to clean corruptions that we are had. First things, how? It seems like cleaning the sires. The sires, when we clean the sires, from above to the loner. From above to loners. So, the, the, the people who were uh, in like elite before, we have like to, to judge them. And the, uh, and the member, uh, the, like first part are member. Then we have to claim the citizens. Even the citizens have something to be judged. Maybe you are going to wonder, but we have. So, before this judgment come to us, we have to like judge ourselves first. What we wear and what we will be. If we wear bad, it's okay. We, we have to correct ourselves. We have to behave in such a way that it's going to benefit us and going to be, uh, benefit our country. So, like, uh, I guess that's all. And thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Do you have a question? Please. Hello, everybody, again. I want to say something to the uh, extra game. I want to. I want to get, I want to say something that for to the previous extra game. When they there in the. I want to talk about the outside policy. When the International Comprehensive Peace Agreement signing uh, at that time in 2005, uh, in the outside there is the outside policy. There is a uh, Dr. Yangorang and Alusman Taha. They represent us in the outside policy. Outside policy. When they there in the outside in one of the country in the Europe, there is international summit. When Alusman and uh, Dr. Yangorang they attend in the hall of the international summit. When it, they go there in the in the that's in a huge a big hall, it's contain a lot of a lot of uh, ambassadors and representatives of the other countries. When they when they go there, Alusmata he said he want to join to the Arab leagues. He said we are Arab. We want to go to the Arab league. Dr. John said, we are not Arab to go into the Arab League. Then, al said, why, is, why not we are going to, the, to join to the African, African League? Dr. John said also, we are not African to join to the Ar African League. We are Sudanese. So they are sit together in, in the, uh, they, they, they are sit together. In one house. So we are the Sudanese people. And we are not going to the Arab League, and we are not going to Africa League. We are the Sudanese. We are the Sudanese people. Uh, thank you very much. So that was a very uh, p nice point of view for you to address. And we all know that Dr. John Jonger, the late Dr. Jonger, uh, was very was one of the major supporters to the idea of uh, Sudanism. He. W more than once, he used to say that, let us address ourselves only as Sudanese. African, Africanism that is opposing Arabism cannot unite us. Arabism that is opposing Africanism cannot unite us, as we are all not Arabs. Let us all drop those crazy ideas that we are all Arabs, which is incorrect. Islam cannot unite us as our single country, because not all of us are Muslims. Christianity cannot unite us, not all of us are Christians, but Sudanism, the idea that we are all are from the same country and represent the same country, have the same values, the same purpose, is the only thing that can unite us, Sudanism. Let's focus on that on the new Sudan, because even though this south, has, uh, this south of Sudan has unfortunately been segregated, separated from the Sudan as a whole, but we are still a culture we are still diverse so let us focus on that on the new sudan let 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 this be one of our major virtues so if we have uh, in order to, for us to regain our uh, our subject of discussion today it's about the 
foreign policy of the Sudan? How can we and how can we prevent the external intervention? Uh, for the, uh, uh, with, with all the respect, I, I don't want to get along with it, but I have seen, I have heard more than one a single person saying that we should focus on ourselves first and then deal with that later on. I respectfully disagree with this because we cannot wait for this. We cannot wait for this to for us to prevent the external intervention because it's already going on. We can s clearly see that the TMC parties, we can see Burhan, we can see Hameti going all the way to the uh, Eastern Coalition, I can say, to Saudi Arabia, to Egypt, to United Arab Emirates. They're already trying to hold those countries' interest. We can clearly hear Hameti saying that we oppose everything that is opposing Saudi Arabia, which is kind of a guarantee for him that the Sudanese soldiers that are currently fighting in Yemen will remain. We can clearly see that they want the benefit of Saudi Arabia, UAE and Egypt. When he went to Egypt, he did not mention Halaib, not even once. And he even gave a salute to Al-Sisi as we also unfortunately. And uh, he said that the opposition of Egypt, any force that is opposing Egypt is opposing Sudan. So our current external relations do not go on the phase of mutual benefit, but unfortunately it goes on the, on the, uh, on the side of single-sided. It's not bilateral, it's only single, uh, one lateral uh, benefit, which we want in the new Sudan to completely be dismissed. So uh, if we have any participants who would like to join with this point, uh, foreign relations in Sudan and how to prevent external prevention, please come on in. Uh, introduce yourself and uh, please speak. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Atayim. So, so thank you. So I actually totally agree with him that we cannot actually stop the foreign countries from like uh, participating on the decisions that we are taking for because they are so afraid of their interest in Sudan. And we all know that, as he mentioned, it's not it's not actually a mutual benefit. It's single. Like they have their benefit, but we do not actually take anything from them. So that's it. So they are not actually going to stop because they are so afraid from. Uh, taking our civilian government and after that we take our troops and for Egypt we stop for uh, like we start fighting for Halaib and we start fighting for other things that we actually have because they are taking our products and they are putting their names in our products and they are selling it to the other countries as they are it is their product it's not ours so now if you went to like other countries you will find an Egyptian's product but it is a Sudanese product like they take our products and they put their names and after that they sell it to the other countries. So they are not going to stop at all. But at the same time, we have to keep fighting for our civilian government. That, that's the solution. And for the humiliation that Sudan actually gets when we travel to other countries, especially, uh, specifically the Arab countries. Well, what are we expecting? If our president, the person who represents us, is going from a country to other country only to beg for money. That's it. That's all they know about Sudanese. Like, whenever you go to Saudi Arabia, they will tell you that they only care about money because the president comes only to beg for money. They don't, he does not come for anything else. So that's what they, the image that they had from the president that we have. So we need actually a president that does not go to take money, that go to take our right, to take the benefit that we have. Like, he goes not to beg them, he goes to demand the thing that he wants. That's it. This is the, the right thing to do for the president. And now we can see that from Burhan, as he mentioned, like he went to Assisi and he gave him a salute. So, uh, like, are you a president? Are you actually a president to go to other presidents and salute him? Like, why? Like, even, like, we have a lot of trouble with Egypt and Halaib and a lot of things. And you go as a president and you salute him. Like, it's not even, like, logical. Uh, and about Sudan itself, and how can we actually let people respect us? So respecting the Sudanese guy, it has to start from Sudanese themselves. So we have to respect ourselves first, so let the other people respect us. How can a person respect the person that the only idea that he have is traveling out of his, of his country and cursing his country? This is the idea that we have as a Sudanese. Yes, it is from the ex-regime and all those things, but at the same time, the patriotism, we did not actually have it. We did not love our country at all. Like, we hate our country literally. Literally, we hate it. 
like people are actually escaping yeah. and taking the risk of dying on the way of traveling outside of the country instead of remaining in the, inside of the country itself. Uh, and out of respect of my brother here uh, who came from America, but he came and the first thing that he mentioned that he is American and he is a Sudanese. But look, the first thing that he said, I'm American, look at the Sudanese. Whenever I go to other country, I take their passport and I pretend that I'm one of them. And at the same time, I'm not actually one of them. I have to be proud that I am a Sudanese and I have to be proud of it. And I have to show it in front of the world, not to scare from it and say that I'm from other country. So we have to respect ourselves to develop ourselves. So respect itself, when, when we take our civilian government, people should, yes, as uh, my brother also mentioned, he mentioned an idea that I really like, that we have to start from like building our country without saying that Sudan did not actually give me anything. Sudan had nothing to give. So we are now building the country to give us. So you, can, you have actually to give first to take. So now Sudan is demanding us. So Sudan is demanding us by the work that we have, by the mind that we have, by, by the idea that we have. So we have to build our country and after that we can go and build other countries. So we have to remain that all the intelligent people has to stay inside of the country and has to develop. And thank you, that's it. Really, we would like to thank you very much. Uh, very good points. Uh, we are still discussing our topic. Uh, for the newcomers, our topic is about uh, Sudan foreign policy and how are we going to prevent um, uh, foreign intervention in the Sudan. So we have a lot of participants are waiting for participation. So we would like to welcome the participants. So very hard clap for him. Very hard clap. Sagatat ma sagatat. Hatta lo sagatat. Welcome. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello. The pleasure and honor all mine to see you all here gathering for one single pur uh, purpose, which is one single country, Sudan. So, and the honor and pleasure all mine to be among such far more distinguished audience like you. Now, when I look back now, I remember that Sudan is a country rich with animal wealth, mineral wealth, agricultural wealth, and water sources, right? Sudan has been known uh, back in the day as the country which was supposed to provide food for the whole world, right? In terms of agriculture, Sudan is a country full of uh, lands uh, suitable for agriculture, which are about 250,000 hectares of land suitable for agriculture. And they're not now being made use of accurately. And uh, also there are some other countries that were expected to be uh, um, countries that could provide the whole world with food in competition with Sudan. And these countries were Canada and Australia. And so Canada, the whole lands which were suitable for agriculture have already been cultivated. And as for uh, uh, Australia, the, um, the soil is a poor sandy soil, which is not as good and suitable as Sudan's um, soil. So now we still, we still have a chance to build a country that could provide food for the whole world. If we get in alliance with countries that can help us develop in all of these aspects, why not? If they get intervened in our own issues, but in order to help us, why don't we agree? Here's the question. Emirates or, US, uh, or UAE a few months ago had produced lots of money and wealth out of a project made in one of the areas here in Sudan. Out of this project, they were able to build their own economy. It's a project regarding uh, CSEM. You know CSEM, right? Yes, agriculture. And out of this uh, project, they were able to build their own economy and uh, boost it in a way or another. So my answer here, if we get into an alliance with countries 
that can help us develop our country, why don't we accept the idea? And I would like to sum up with a few words. As long as we're all here, gather, uh, gathering for one single purpose, uniting for a civilian government that will move Sudan from this terrible times to more advanced um, times. Let us all unite all the way to the end and let us all get together all the way to the end. And thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we like your points. Uh, so we have another participant. So welcome. A uh, very hard club for him. Very hard club. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. My brother here, teachers, brilliant people. And I'm glad to be with you. Out of that, I'll get straight into the topic. Uh, in addition to the what Mr. Taib said and what the doctor mentioned, and what all the participants, I think they, they said everything and nothing to be added. But I will just start to just uh, say the conclusion. I, I, I might be the, the last one or the, in the, the last process. Uh, the idea of uh, the international uh, relationship with the world, you know that the world now became like the, the, an open market. We cannot separate, we cannot isolate ourselves, uh, but we can adapt ourselves and to be connected with the world. You know that the international uh, relationship with the, with the other countries, that it's all about the benefits between the countries. And if we have a benefit, we could offer it to the others. And if they have, we could, have, we could get it from them. As we have now in Saudi Arabia, our military, they are just fighting, fighting for what I don't know, but they're fighting. They're getting money, they are happy, getting into the market, buying things to their, to their families, and getting back happy to their homes. It's not a big deal, why not? It is kind of marketing. The world became the market. We are marketing ourselves. Uh, otherwise, you can find yourself that interfering in other issues, uh, other countries, and saying that why Iran's just uh, terrifying the U.S., terrifying the KSA, or something like that. It's not our business. Our business, our business inside our country. It's not outside. It's not to find others. It's not showing muscles to others because we don't have even muscles. Is this that muscles? Show it to the civilians, in the sense, in, in the, area, okay, the area. So I don't believe that is good and uh, I don't mind that the relationship with the world, but it should be in the limit. Uh, on, the other, on the other hand, we can cover ourselves. We have the other choice. We can isolate ourselves. We can be alone. We can be as a North Korea, build ourselves first. After that, we can open ourselves to the world. Why not? We have everything and we can do anything. So the both choices are available. It depends on our decision as a civilian. After getting the civilian government, the choice will be ours. We will choose to deal with whom, not deal with who. This is our rights and this is what we are looking for. And this is what we came up here to give and to, to send our message to the people. Uh, finally, I would like to say that freedom, justice, peace to all Sudanese, and this is the only uh, thing that we are just calling around is freedom to everyone who can participate, saying his opinion freely without getting any kind of criticism. I took a lot of time, sorry. Uh, but accepting ourselves first and leave, letting all the things that the, the, the last regime built on our in our generation. We are full of beliefs and uh, uh, cultures and everything, every beautiful thing that the, the people said that we lost it, patriotism, uh, patriotism and everything is available. And it's clear here in Al-Qiyada place. So we can build Sudan by these people. These people now here, gathered for nothing, surrounded with all these kind of weapons. I'm fearing no one, I'm fearing no fear. Being as one nation, they will change the world. Uh, it is not a motivation. But this is the truth, as the doctor said. <laughs> uh, finally, that just freedom, justice, peace to all Sudanese. And I would like to say another thing. Faller does not fall. We shall be united all. Yeah. This is the uh, things that we need to be. This is the way that we are. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you very much, brother. And uh, just a small feedback on what you have just mentioned. His first point was the fact that, you know, having a, it's an open, the world now is an open market. And the fact that our soldiers are going to Yemen and having a fight, uh, having a fight over there. And coming back with interest of their own is not a problem. 
I respectfully disagree with what you said because war will never be a business. War is killing, war is destruction, war is against all of our human values. And having us fight as mercenaries with all the respect to the army, but this is just what we do over there. We are mercenaries for another country. The rapid force forces uh, City are working as mercenaries in Yemen, which is completely unacceptable for us. It's against our dignity as a country. It's against our values. Why should we kill people who did nothing for us just because we want money? Why? What, what difference does it make for us and uh, from thieves and killers or what whatsoever? We are killing people. We have no problem with. We're killing people who only are targeting Saudi Arabia. And believe me, Saudi Arabia can defend for itself. Saudi Arabia has an army. Saudi Arabia has enough military technology to defend ourselves. But they don't put their soldiers on the foreground. Never. They only act as uh, air support or or technological support, but they never put their own soldiers in the front line. It's only the Sudanese who are on the front line. It's only us who are getting killed, our soldiers who are getting killed. So I respectfully disagree with your first point. As for your second point, uh, without respect, when you said that we should start with the our government, our civil government first, and then we should move along with the, our foreign relations. Uh, this point has been mentioned previously several times, and I have disagreed on a single purpose. We cannot wait for us to start with the foreign uh, relations because the foreign relations are the foreign policy is already having its effect on our revolution, and unfortunately, it's not a positive effect; it's a negative effect. We can clearly see that that the the TMC is working with the. Uh, Gulf countries, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Egypt, they're working against our revolution. They are currently cooking, uh, have already started the counter-revolution against what we have progressed so far. So we cannot wait, and we can see our opposition, the uh, professional, uh, the Sudanese Professional Association, and the Coalition of Freedom and Change. We can see that they have stopped working on a national base only, and have started working internationally. We have seen them in the previous days having discussions with foreign ambassadors of both Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen. So they have came to the point that we cannot walk, we cannot get our goal without at least discussing the interest of the foreign uh, of the foreign countries and trying to reach a mutual mutual ground just for now, in order for us to continue on with our uh, with our revolution. We can give them the promise, our temporary stance that your interest will be as they are until we have what we have then the people of sudan will be deciding what do they want so those were my two remarks on what you have said with all the respect i i disagree with them uh so we continue our discussions with the newcomers please come on sir with the uh, our subject today is the sudan foreign relations and how to prevent the negative intervention on our country. So, uh, please join us, sir, if you can. Uh, sorry, really, we are running out of time, so that's why we're going to stop here. But before that, I would like to thank you, all of you, for your participation. And as we said that, our revolution will continue. And as Nelson Mandela said that, we fight against black domination and we fight against white domination. We cherish the ideal of democratic and free society in which all Sudanese people live together in harmony and equal opportunities. So saying goodbye is not forever. Mm -hmm. Saying goodbye, goodbye is not the end. They simply mean we will miss you until we see you again. So thank you very much. Thank you. We do appreciate your contribution.